Okay, let's talk about a few situational things. Um, first, we're going to talk about if you're placing an implant and it stops, when you're putting implant in, it stops too high in the osteotomy. And then we're going to talk about um, when, it's, when, you know, when there's not enough stability and when it may stop even with it. Then we'll kind of go into pressure necrosis, what that means. So let's say we're putting an implant in um, and you're putting it in and then it stops like four or five millimeters above it. So your options at this point are you take the implant out and you drill more. And typically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drilling about a millimeter longer and usually a, a little bit wider. So I typically, let's say, um, you know, that this is a posterior and we have a four or three implant and this is a 4.3 by 11.5. So at that point with a 4.3 11.5, you put it in, it's that stable. What I would do is I would put the 4.3 burr back in and I would bring it to a 4.3 by 13. And then I would actually grab the plus size burr, which is gonna make it a little bit wider. And I would put the plus size burr all the way to depth. So I put it at four, three by 13 with the plus size burr. At that point, once you put the implant back in, it should go down a little bit further. If it isn't, um, there's two things you check. You check the depth, make sure that you're actually drilling to the depth. And then at that point as well, I would check the width, the width of, width of it. Um, sometimes in super, super thick bone, you may actually have to take, uh, you know, you could actually just take this four, three, and let me take this back out. Okay, cool. So now when you put the implant in, it should go to depth. You're gonna want it to stop about a millimeter up, which is like about one to two millimeters above the osteotomy. Which at that point, that's when you just pick up your torque wrench and you can finish it off this way. So I usually we'll put like my finger here, the press down while my other fingers are torquing in this end. Right here. And remember the little lines on it? You want the lines to go about one millimeter below the bone. Always, 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 always. Uh, let's say you're putting the implant in and you're even with the cortex. Then this Newton centimeter, you put this on it and it's like over to here, it's like 60, 70. Uh, and it's on the cortex. That is a big no-no in the beginning. I would say, hey, I got the implant in, like, thank God, right? I got the implant in, it looks good in the position, I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna cover it. But this cortex bone is very thick, it doesn't offer a lot of blood supply, and that's when you end up with one millimeter bone loss. So even with the cortex is just not good enough, you have to get it one millimeter below. So if you're even with the cortex, and then you put the implant in, and, you're, and you see that this torque is, you know, max torque at that point, your options are you can unwind it. You can go reverse like one, two, and then go forward one, two, three, and do that a few times. You may have to do it four or five, six times to get it, you know, even a millimeter deeper sometimes if it's too, uh, too stable. So you go forward again, one, two, three, and at that point, you should be that what one millimeter deeper into the perfect position. And if you still can't get it, don't accept uh, being even with the cortex as your final result. I would take the implant out and then I would actually drill a little bit wider again, one more time and then put the implant in because uh, you want a very, very long lasting implant. Now, let's say we have the, the alternative happen where we're putting the implant in and Let's say you're putting a 4.3.11 in. And as you're putting the implant in with the handpiece, and you're going, again, to remember your settings, 30 Newton centimeters is your, set, is your stopping point for the implant. But let's say you're putting it in, and it just keeps going. 
It's going, you're, hasn't stopped still, you're even with the cortex, then you're one below, and then, ooh, let's stop, right? Like, what's going on here? So you're one millimeter below already, and it still hasn't torqued out. Like, right there, right? So you say, cool, my implant is in the perfect position. I like where it is. I like where the depth is. At that point, you can keep it where it is, and you can do primary closure. And my cutoff point for a cover screw versus a healing abutment <clears throat> is at 25. So let's say you put this implant in, and then you measure the stability of it. And on here, it says that you are at 25, right? then cool, you're perfect. We can, at that point, place a cover screw or a healing abutment. But if it's less than 25, let's say you're at 10 or, you know, you put it at 10 and it's moving, or at 15 and it's moving, that is not stable, a very stable implant. So your options at that point can be you put a cover screw on, you put the tissue over the top, and then you will be waiting uh, at least probably 16 weeks for the implant to grow into the bone. Or, your alternative is you take the implant out and you're going to place a little bit wider implant um, and possibly a little bit deeper. So for this position, if I was putting a posterior implant, I put a 4.3, uh, I would go in next with a 5 by 11.5. That would be just enough to get the torque value up a little bit more. But for the most part, to make surgery predictable, a stable implant that's going in will always heal to be a stable implant. So with Neodent 2, you can return or exchange spinners like this. So I would encourage you to make every implant minimum torque value of 30, because what you don't want to have happen is later down the road, you go to uncover this implant, the implant is still spinning. Uh, right? That's one thing we definitely want to avoid. So try to challenge yourself and get every implant at 30 newton centimeters of torque or better, um, and you will have great success rates.